Okay, what we're looking at here is a water cooled uh, or water source heat pump. It's in cooling mode, so it's acting like a water cooled condenser. We're using water to condense the refrigerant. Now, uh, right now, we have this thing. Our head pressure is 275, suction pressure is 66, uh, return air temperature is about 78, and we got about 17 degrees across the coil. Now, the head pressure is pretty high here. Was, our super eats really low, too. Now, this is a uh, cap tube feed. So the suction pressure is in direct relation to the head pressure. The higher the head pressure, the higher the suction pressure. Now, that's a pretty high head pressure. And one of the interesting things about these things is I can pretty much dial whatever head pressure I want because it's the amount of water I allow in. Okay, you can see over here, I've got the water valve and I'm set to adjust it. First thing I'm probably going to do here, you notice my suction pressure is probably a little lower than I'd like it to be. I've dealt with quite a few of these things and they all seem to run a little bit low on suction unless you knock your head pressure to the roof. So, uh, I think it has to do with compromises of design. Newer units are far better at this than these units. But, uh, I've dialed that head pressure up pretty high in, uh, in an effort to get the suction pressure up a little bit. And while we're doing this, I thought we'd just go ahead and sort of demonstrate how cap tube feeds work. Because it's pretty easy with these things. Okay, you notice I'm at a at 271 pounds of head pressure. Now you can see I'm already up to 290, 310, 20, oh boy, oh shit, here we go. Uh, they never open. Yeah, it wasn't 400 pounds of head. Okay, come back down a little bit now. Okay. I'm going to let this thing settle out. And at a real high head. And then I'm going to show you how I can adjust that head pressure, which will adjust the suction pressure. Okay, I've set that head pressure about as high as I dare. Now I want you to look. I got 370 pounds of head. I've got 70, almost 76 uh, pounds of pressure suction. Superheat is 2.6. Now right now I've checked my water output. That is the temperature of the water that's coming out. Comes out of here. That's it's just a hose. That's all I get. This is this water here is going out to. That's uh, actually just going out the ground right now. It's 116 degrees. My inlet water is 55. So you can see 370 some pounds ahead. 76 suction. Super heat. Very low. Now I'm going to start adjusting this down to allow more water to come through. Now you can see an immediate drop in the head pressure. You also see a drop in the suction pressure, and that's normal because this is a fixed orifice device unit. It's actually about four cap tubes up there. Now, my uh, suction pressure kind of dropped in the toilet, super way up. We'll probably adjust a little bit from there. Okay, we're pretty well settled down. 
the discharge water temperature is about 103 right now. Head pressure is down to 240. My suction pressure has gone down quite a bit, 61 and a half. We've got 20 degrees of super heat. Now, let's drop the head a little bit more. Okay, I've let this settle as I lowered the head pressure. Now we're at 208. Suction pressure is 56. We're getting down to almost freezing now. Uh, but here's a super heat. Look at that super heat one. Way out of sight. Why did it do all that? Because I don't have enough head pressure compared to suction pressure or pressure difference to make this thing actually work. So, uh, what do I do? You see, I'd, I'd love to run a, a head pressure of 200, 208, 175, something like that. Because that would be more efficient and easier on the compressor. However, if I run that low pressure in the head, I'm going to run crazy low on the suction side. Because it is a fixed orifice device unit, you're pretty much stuck with how they want it to be. Now remember, the charge in this is right in the money. I put the exact charge in it that it's designed for. Okay, one more time. Now my discharge water is 87 degrees now. Okay, so you're kind of tied in on these machines to a certain way of charging it. I don't think these older machines like this were all that uh, energy efficient. For one thing, I think the indoor coil was a little too small. But I just kind of wanted to show you this. Now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jack this back up again. Remember, we're running about 80, I think it's 87 degrees uh, discharge water temperature. And we're down here where our suction pressure is below what I'd want to have it at. So, and we're 208 on the head. So now I'm going to jack it up one more time. Okay, everything's settled down now. My discharge water temperature is 106. If we look at our numbers here, we're running 64.6, 258, and the subcool is still very, or the superheat is still very, very low. Okay, let's try dropping that head pressure a little more. Okay, let's look at what's happened now. I've dropped my head pressure down to just under 230. Suction pressure has dropped down to 60.5, and my super went up to 22 and a half. Shoot. Okay, my uh, discharge water temperature is 95, and you can see my super heat's pretty much staying the same. It seems I can't run this thing with a low head pressure without getting a very high super heat. Okay, let's jack the pressure up a little more. Okay, with all my whittling and piddling with this thing, my final numbers on this are 246 on the head, seems kind of high, 63 on the suction, we got about 10 degrees of superheat, and our discharge water temperature is 102. Now, if I was setting this up, this is how I would set it. Hope this silly thing makes some kind of sense. I'm just trying to give you an idea of how these water-cooled units, how they react to the changes in water flow.